Well, good evening everyone. I'm Nancy Howell and this is our Fall Warbler Challenge mid-challenge check-in. Um, we've really had some really nice warblers coming through this fall. The weather's been pretty darn good um, and we're hoping we can get a few more folks signed up for the challenge. Uh, so we're just going to go over uh, a little bit about, well, again, identification, what's been done. Uh, we're going to take a look at a, a checklist that's been uh, a blank checklist as well as one that has been worked on so you can see how things get filled in. Uh, I will mention that if, even though it says mid-challenge, uh, the warblers are going to be petering out in about a couple weeks uh, with the cool weather that we're really experiencing now. So. Uh, you know, even though it runs until the end of October, we're going to go to the bitter end. So our Fall Warbler Challenge started on uh, September 1 and runs until October 31st. And this is really to skip that span of time that most of the warblers are coming through the area in the fall. Yes, there's several species that um, perhaps vacated the area in late summer, like to the end of August, and maybe even into early September. Um, but no matter, there's still a good uh, number of species that have come through, and a few more that are still going to be coming through for this fall. Um, the challenge really was to get experienced birders, birders that you know really want to see those fall warblers. They're great in the spring, but the fall warblers can be a bit more challenging. And so we were hoping that we would get lots and lots of folks signed up for the fall. Um, we had a lot of uh, other parts to this challenge, um, as you notice on the slide, uh, that we had some fall warbler identification. Ryan Jacobs with Black Swamp Bird Observatory. He's the staff ornithologist, did a superb job, and you can go back and check that out, um, going over field uh, points or things that you could see in the field, some behaviors, that type of thing. He, he did a great, a really fun job. Um, we also have a lot of areas in Northeast Ohio that warblers uh, come through, and so we had Buster Vanish, we had Tim Jasinski, and Tim Colborn uh, all talk, talking about some of the uh, hot spots in the area. So places like you know the, all the different parts of the Cleveland Metro Parks, uh, Wendy Park, Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve, and those are just in Cuyahoga County because this challenge really is that people could go anywhere in the county in which you live. So if you live in Cuyahoga County, you can go anywhere in Cuyahoga County, east side, west side, north side, oh, don't go too far north though, and south side. Uh, if you live in Lorain County, again, visit all the different areas there. If you live in Lake County. So we hope that you can visit a lot of different areas and, and gather those, those fall warblers on your checklist. So there was a nice presentation by the, the two two Tims and, and, a, and a Buster <laughs> uh, about the hot spots. And that you can uh, review as well. Um, then, we, again, we had Ryan Jacobs come back and he did uh, The Place to Be, Ohio Birding Network. It was a live broadcast and he was actually taking a walk through Maumee Bay State Park and doing some birding. Um, it was, uh, I think it was a little windy that day, so, and a little overcast. So, uh, again, we were able to uh, hear and see some things. It was really, really nice. So, again, check that one out as well, too. Um, of course, the, the fall, uh, the, the mid challenge check in is tonight. And then uh, we're still working on getting some research uh, information about fall warblers as well as a photography evening. Uh, and those will be and those will be um, hopefully uh, part of this fall warbler challenge in the near future. All right. And then to top it off, we're going to have a wrap-up on uh, November 14th, it's a Saturday, 
at 3 in the afternoon and we're just going to go through what people have seen, uh, maybe some photographs that people took that might be a little challenging and we'll, we'll be able to help in identification. So, uh, and, and you know, just have a nice discussion. So it'll be a, a wrap up, not just myself talking, but all the participants who uh, joined in. So uh, we hope that you'll be able to join in on uh, that one. And, and you know, really do look back at some of those other ones that have already uh, been recorded and you can pick up some tips there. All right, so the next slide. All right, so this is the, the checklist that was created for the Fall Warbler Challenge. I know it's kind of small on the screen, um, but uh, maybe Betsy, if you could take your cursor and, and go across the, the top of the, of the uh, list, that's where you would put your date and the location of, your, of where you were that, that day. Um, so in the very first column going down is a, an example and that example uh, I think I can't remember what what I can't remember what it says yep um, but that's just an example so on a certain date at a certain place those certain warblers were seen along the left column under the our logo are all the different warblers that could potentially come through this area in the fall I mean, I even tossed in Kirtland's Warbler, which is not likely to be seen, but I threw it in there just in case, again, folks were out and they saw a Kirtland Warbler. So they're listed in alphabetical order uh, rather than taxonomic order. So I hope that doesn't bother anybody. But uh, all you simply have to do is see the bird, a common yellow throat, a Cape May Warbler, a Hooded Warbler, or whatever, and just tuck it in the little box next to the species name under the column where you were birding uh, on the date and, uh, and, the, and where you were birding that day. All right, uh, And you can see on the slide the uh, checklist PDF is listed there. Uh, so that one is, is uh, again, really easy to, to download. All right, our next slide next couple slides as a matter of fact aha this is one that I was working on and actually I have two sheets I only I only uh, gave one to Betsy to put on this slide presentation uh, so and it had, we had to be divided into an upper and a lower section just because the uh, the checklist is so long but I think you can see a little bit of, again across the top all the dates that I went out to different places, mostly Lake Isaac, and that was because Lake Isaac was our virtual field trip in the month of September. And it's really close to where I live, too. So, so I went out there quite often. I kind of wanted to see, I had really never done this before, I kind of wanted to see what the, what the warbler uh, diversity would, would be throughout these, these couple of months, September and October. So I'm still working on that for October as well. But you can see I went out to Lake Isaac several times, Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve several times. And I think, yeah, I think that's all I hit on that particular sheet. So on, uh, let's say, for American Red Start, which is the very first species on the list, um, it was seen um, on September 5th and 6th and 9th. So it, again, in different places, some at Lake Isaac, some at Cleveland Lake Front Nature Preserve. So that's all you simply have to do is just put a big old X where you, uh, of the species you saw on the date and where it was seen. So as you can see, uh, as you look down the list, yeah, you can see American Red Start, pretty cool, bay-breasted warbler, black and white, not very common, black burnian, ooh, only one, but on the next sheet there will be a couple. Uh, black poles, they kind of scattered throughout. Black-throated uh, uh, blue warbler, a couple of there. Black-throated green, 
couple blueing horribly. Hey, what? What's wrong? Did I not see them? No, I did not. Was the habitat not appropriate? That's a possibility. Are they an earlier migrant that I maybe missed them? That's a possibility too. Uh, for example, the next one down, Canada Warbler. Haven't seen a one this fall. Others may have, but it tends to be one that moves out a little earlier. So uh, end of uh, August and early September, they're, they're on their way. So I wasn't really expecting to see one. So, and as you can see, Cape May Warblers, you can see they're kind of scattered throughout. Cerulean, which really is not the most common warbler here in Northeast Ohio. It's a lot more common Southern Ohio, places like that, and West Virginia, so forth. So I wasn't expecting that. And it tends to be, a, again, a little earlier, uh, or a migrant that leaves a little earlier. Uh, Chestnut-sided warbler. Uh, but look at look at common yellow throat. Boom, bitty, boom, 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 boom. I have seen it every time I have been out. Look at that. So that one's pretty common. And for our Christmas bird count, we have gotten common yellow throat in the winter. So that is a potential one to to get. I mean, it's it's rare. It has to be uh, for a Christmas bird count. We do have to document it. But uh, but it's a fairly common uh, bird that you can see throughout the fall. All right, um, we're going to skip to go to the next slide. So this remember this was the upper part of the checklist. Here's the lower part. Here's the rest of it. So again, parts that are blank, like Louisiana water thrush and northern water thrush and oh, orange crown warbler. That's an interesting one. They're going to be coming in. Uh, some have been sighted already, but they're they're kind of a later migrant. So in my on my other sheet that that I will have, hopefully I'll at least get one. I have a really hard time with orange crowned warblers. They're hard to find. They're, they disappear on me all the time. But I'm going to get one this year all by myself. Not have anybody show me where it is. Uh, magnolias, you can see, are in pretty good um, abundance. Nashville as well. Um, Tennessee warblers scattered early and a little bit later. Um, Wilson's a little bit later. Again, worm-eating warbler, not a warbler that we would expect to really see that much in the fall here. Um, yellow rumps are just beginning to come in. You notice it's a little later on this checklist, which is, uh, I think the date is like towards the end of September. My October sheet um, will have more uh, yellow rump or myrtle warblers there. Um, Yellow-throated warbler, again, early early out of here. And then yellow warblers, same thing. So so again, these, these sheets, when you start looking at them, uh, if you filled in a lot of, of, you'll say, oh yeah, 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 that 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 bird I see quite often throughout the fall. So it's a, or it's a it's a migrant that is ex extends its migration from, let's say, mid September through early October. Uh, then you might have ones that are like scattered, you know, early early uh, September mid-September, and then they peter out, so they're pretty much gone. And then ones that just don't show up at all because they either, again, have already left, or perhaps the habitat is not as appropriate for them to come through. So it, it, it's kind of a nice little overview, and I, I kind of like looking at it saying, oh, that's interesting. And I really wanted to see what, it, what Lake Isaac uh, had uh, as far as these fall warblers coming through. So it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. All right, let's see what's going on with our next slide. Ah, look at, oh, it's so nice to see the birds. And this will help anybody who might or think about going out now or again once, maybe tomorrow or this weekend or during the week. Um, the American Red Start. Uh, the males, as Ryan had mentioned, the male which is on the left-hand side, the orange and black one, 
they stay the same. So you don't really have any problem really looking at those guys. They're, they're like, okay, orange and black, boom, American Red Star. It's the young males and the females, like the one on the right, that can be confusing. Uh, but you can see a little smudge of, of that yellowish on the, um, just at the bend of the wing. And uh, if we could see the tail a little better, there would be some some uh, yellowish in the tail. So where the, the male has the orange on it, the females tend to have yellow. Young males ha tend to have kind of a yellowish to yellowish orange color. But you can see it, it could be a confusing warbler. Uh, one thing that they their behavior is they do like to do some fly catching, which means if they're sitting in a tree and they see an insect outside of where they're feeding, they'll go out, snap it, and then come back to the to the tree branch. So that's a behavior that you may want to to watch for: is a bird going out, boom, coming back to a tree branch, going back out, fluttering, come back, and say, mm, "I wonder if that's a uh, American red start." Sometimes they'll also fan their tail, too. So that's another behavior that you might want to notice. Uh, and sometimes this is a way to determine uh, the species. Oh, and if anybody has any questions, um, toss them in the chat, OK? And that would be lovely. And we can uh, take a look at them. Uh, look like there's some things in the chat already. This is lovely. Beautiful. All right. Questions so far? All right. We can head to our next slide. All righty. Uh, Magnolia warbler. Um, not quite as bright as you would see them in the spring. Uh, so think about this as if you poured water over a nice spring male and he, he kind of got washed out a little bit. All right. But you notice the undersides are yellow. There's some streaking on the, on the undersides that are kind of, again, washed out. Uh, notice the eye. There's these eye arcs, those crescents of white above and below the eye. Uh, the upper sides tend to be more gray than black. Uh, and um, we don't have a good photograph of the tail. But the tail underneath, not the top, but underneath, uh, if you're looking at it from below, which is you know, what you're often doing is you've got your binoculars and you're looking straight up at their bottom. The tail looks like it's been dipped in black ink. So about half the tail black towards the tip and the rest is white uh, towards the body. So, so that one's a pretty easy one to tell, uh, again, with the tail being dipped in that black ink. All right, let's go to the next slide. And again, another magnolia there. You can see a nice uh, side view. Again, gray upper side, yellow under, underneath, uh, some streaking. And uh, although the photo tends to look like a little washed out, you can see that, that eye ring or eye arc. Now, on the right-hand side, oh boy, this is one that can be really be confusing. Now, those of you who might not be as familiar with this, this bird looks so different in the spring. This is called a bay-breasted warbler. And in the spring, they have a chocolatey face, bay-brown on their breast and flanks. But look at this. This bird looks, well, what color would you call it? Green, right? Yeah, so you don't, really don't see that color. Sometimes you will see a little bit of wash of bay on the, on the flanks. Uh, but notice those wings. Uh, I think Ryan had a really funny thing. Um, he had a, a little mnemonic that he remembered. WTF. <laughs> Wings, throat, and face. That's what they, not what you're thinking there. WTF. Wings, throat, and face. So notice the wings have two wing bars. Um, this one, uh, again, looks a little bit greenish yellow, but I think that's just uh, because of the, the shadowing from the leaves. Um, kind of a greenish upper side. You might notice there's a little bit of, of color around the eye. Uh, sometimes it's, it's more noticeable than that. Not much streaking on this bird. 
because there's a, a cousin to this bird that has much more streaking, all right? So let's go to the next slide. I think the next slide has a bay-breasted that shows, aha, look at the one on the left, a bay-breasted warbler. Can you see that little chunk of bay under the, kind of under the wing? Never you see that? I, I see heads nodding. Good. That's good. Yeah. So that that's nice. Uh, again, greenish upper side, two bright wing bars, and then that little wash of bay. Ah, here's another good clue. If you can see the feet, yeah, you're going to be looking at birds' feet, believe it or not. No, look at the color of the legs and the feet on the bay-breasted warbler. Gray, dark, okay. But a close relative, the black pole warbler, which... Again, in the spring, looks very different from the bird on the right, which is the black pole. Has yellow feet. Can everybody see that? Okay. And now you're going to be saying, oh, right, I'm going to be out looking at this bird jumping around at 20 miles an hour, and I'm going to be looking for its feet. Yes, you are. <laughs> uh, because that is one of the diagnostic characteristics. But I think you'll also notice on these two birds, the, the bay breast does not have as much streaking on it, whereas the black pole, you can see hints of streaking on the, the breast area and kind of going towards the sides. Because in the spring, these birds are, as the males, I should say, the black pole are black and white with lots and lots of black and white streaking on their uh, breast and, and sides. Oh, by the way, the word black pole, black cap or black head. So black pole warblers in the spring will have a lot of black on their head, almost like a, like, almost like a chickadee, black. Okay. Uh, please notice that the black pole also has two white wing bars. So you see this bird jumping around in the trees, two white wing bars. Both birds are kind of greenish. Hmm, then you notice, oh, one's got a little streaking on it. Then you, then you look at its feet, and you're like, ah, it's got yellow feet. I know that bird. It's a black pole warbler. Okay? So, so this is, again, this is the fun challenge of the fall. And sometimes if you're out, and, I mean, even the best birders, hopefully people, uh, the people who are really good birders say, oh, yeah, I know every single bird that comes through. Uh, sometimes you may hear somebody say, oh, that's a bay pole. What in the world? No, that simply means they haven't simply identified it as a, a bay breast or a black pole. So it's in that black pole bay breast complex. So just just a fun little thing, a bay pole, not a maypole. Okay. Any questions so far? No. All right. Let's go to the next slide. Let's see what we've got next. Ooh, I love these. All right, I love this photo on the left-hand side. It looks like a birdie just kind of floating in air without its wings even being out. I think it's a great shot by Chuck Safarchik. Um, this is a black-throated blue warbler. Hmm. Or, as the, the label says, black-throated blue warbler, blue warbler. <laughs> That's okay. Black, but, but, but you're looking at this in a... I, I don't see black. I don't see blue. Well, if this were a male, it looks pretty much like the males in the in the springtime. Kind of a, a beautiful blue gray back and black on the throat. It's really well named. Plus the males have a little spot of white on their on their folded wing. If you look at this bird, can you see a little spot of white on that folded wing? Mm -hmm. The underside is kind of a, hmm, I don't know what, what color you might, taupey, kind of a yellowish color. And then the back looks greenish, but there's something different about that green. It has a, a tinge of blue. This is, this is a female black-throated blue warbler. Um, both males and females do not change much spring to fall. So a female would look like this in the spring. The females look like this in the fall. So that little dot of white on the on the wing, sometimes it's called a handkerchief, you know, when the ladies used to carry like a little handkerchief in their pocket or in their hand. So their little white handkerchief uh, on the wing.
really, really a, a, a lovely, lovely little bird, both males and females. Black-throated blue warbler. Now, on the right, you got a black-throated green warbler. And I think this is one that's pretty dark on well-named, as, as is the male black-throated blue. Oh, the question. WTA, wings, throat, and face. The F is face, F-A-C-E, not feet. Thanks, Gloria. Um, Black-throated green warbler, well, they don't change much. Uh, in the fall, the black on the throat can be highly variable. I've seen black-throated greens that look, in the fall, that look just about like they would in the spring. Really deep black throat. The one in the photo here, not bad. You can still tell it has a black throat. I have seen males uh, that are pretty dull. Not You don't really see that much black, and the females probably have very little at all. But notice the face. It's a very yellowish color, and that uh, from around the eye to the ear area, and the ear would be right behind the eye. You notice that little green, kind of almost like a triangular or a trapezoidal shape. Uh, the back of the bird is green. So black throated green warbler, again, pretty doggone well named. Look how light and white it is underneath. So again, you've got your binoculars, you're looking straight up at the bird, you see your white belly, and you might see some black streaking. And you pretty much will be able to tell that bird. Pretty, isn't it? Fantastic. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Alrighty, um, the, we'd like to toss some things in that don't change very much. Uh, the bird on the left, what color is it? Black and white. Guess what? You've just named that warbler. It's a black and white warbler. And they don't change too much. The males, of course, will get a little deeper and in, in, uh, get some slightly different uh, markings of black on it in the spring. but. It's a black and white warbler. But here's a cool thing about black and white warblers. They move around on the trees, uh, on the trunks of trees often. So not always on branches, jumping from branch to branch or twig to twig. They'll often move uh, along the limbs and on the trunk of a tree, maybe a little bit more like a woodpecker or a, a nuthatch. So again, that simple behavior, you might see a bird that, you know, just zoom, it goes to a, a tree trunk, it goes to the other side of the trunk, and you're like, oh, that was not a nuthatch, that was not a woodpecker. Comes out the other side, oh, black and white warbler, because you've already noticed, you've already been be, being focused on the behavior of, of that particular bird. So that's a nice one to, to find in the, in the fall. The one on the right, chestnut-sided warbler, and this one is pretty well marked because you can see it even has a little bit of that chestnut on its side. Uh, this one is, is showing the color that they turn in the fall. Um, that, that mm, what do you call it, chartreusey green head and back. And then that bright white eye ring. All right, so there's the face there, Gloria, the eye ring. Uh, look at the wing. There's two wing bars. All right, so there's the wing. And um, so this this is a bird that's really easy to identify. I know I, when when Ryan, if you, or if you look at Ryan's uh, video, he says this one is is a little harder. He says it changes a lot. It does change, but it's still easily identifiable in the in the fall because of that chartreuse green upper side, that white around the eye, and the light color underneath. It's, uh, it, it, I, it's one of my favorites. I think it's really easy to ID. Springtime, of course, called chestnut sided because it does have that, it has a racing stripe of chestnut down the side. I, it's one of my faves. So just take a good look. And remember, all these birds are small. They're going to be moving at, uh, uh, you know, warp speed through the trees, and if the, there's still vegetation on the trees, you know, they go behind a leaf and they disappear. 
right, let's check out the next slide, please. Alrighty, a um, really pretty bird called the Cape May Warbler. And if you take a look at the scientific name, Cetophaga tigrina. All right, look at that tigrina, little tiger. Why do you think it's called little tiger? Look at that breast. So the bird on the left is a pretty brightly colored male, uh, Cape May Warbler. Uh, you can see that streaking on the breast. You can see that yellow uh, kind of on the throat, but then going up kind of towards the side of the head to behind the eye. So yellow, yellow, um, and, and, and again, the, the heavy, fairly heavy streaks on that well-marked bird. Check out the bird on the right. Where's the yellow? Hardly there, isn't it? So look at it. Could be a female, could be a, a male that just hatched that year, but look at all those streaks, with all those stripes. Right, so it's a, a relative. That one's relatively dull. Um, you might just see, and you kind of kind of squint. You might just see a little hint of, of yellow, kind of behind that, uh, the, in the behind that eye, um, in the ear area. A little hint of yellow, but just remember, little tiger. Okay, got those streaks all running down the breast and then the side. So just really get a good look at those. So because you might see some bright colored males like on the left, and you may run into some dull colored birds as you see on the right. All right, let's check out the next one. All right, check out that Cape May. Not quite as yellowish on the face, but you can still see that little hint of yellow again, kind of behind that cheek patch, behind the eye. But look at those little tiger stripes on its breast and, and flanks. Now on the right is another bird. But wait, can you see any stripes on that bird on the right? I can. They're not. A, they're not very distinct, are they? No. All right. A palm warbler. Um, this is a pretty dull-looking bird in the fall. Um, in the spring, they're a little prettier. They've got a rusty cap and a little bit more yellow on them. Fall birds you may see with a little bit more yellow, maybe a hint of rust on the cap. Um, but if you kind of look towards the back of that bird, uh, where his wingtips are, you might notice under the tail it's yellow. You see kind of a hint of yellow. Mm -hmm. Palm warblers like to move around on the ground and they wag their tail. So again, a behavior. Move around on the ground, that tail. Flip, flip, wag, wag, wag. They go up into a tree, wag, wag, wag. You see that yellow underneath the tail? Good behavior to look for. So again, this, is, this one is, to me, is a confusing fall warbler. Uh, it's one of the first ones that I ran into this past fall. Uh, but I'll tell you, when I looked at, at the dull bird that I saw, I definitely had to come home and go through a couple of field guides and say, no, no, yeah, that's the one, that's it. So again, you really do have to sometimes double check um, if, you're, if you're not sure. And uh, yeah, that's what I saw. Very cool. Next slide, please. Oh, look at these guys. Yeah, Tom Fishburne does some fantastic photography. The light on these birds is beautiful. But these birds are, are really lovely in the fall as well, too. These are called Nashville Warblers. And I'll bet you notice something that really just sticks out right away. What's, 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 what do you notice? Boing! Look at that eye ring. Right, look at that. Nice bright eye ring around the eye. Um, not all birds may have this that brilliant an eye ring. This one looks like uh, a male that probably was hatched last year or maybe even older. Uh, this year's young birds will have a, more of a dusky eye ring. But gray head, green back, yellow throat and underside. So face, throat, notice the wings, 
There are no stripes on the wings, no wing bars. Uh, but this one's pretty easy to ID. Nashville Warbler. I like the pose. I like the way the light is on this bird, too. All right. Let's take a look at the next slide. Here's one that can be very confusing. Now, you would say the bird on the, on the right, the common yellow throat, that doesn't look very confusing. No, no, a yellow throat. Okay, got that little little mask on its face, like a little bandit. Uh, these birds tend to like to be in wetland areas, so marshy areas. Um, remember on my checklist uh, for Lake Isaac and, and the Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve, pretty much throughout the whole of September, I got common yellow throat, right? Because they will hang around. The bird on the left, I'll tell you, confuses a lot of people. The bird on the left is... Um, looks as though it's a young male. Can you see just a little tint of black around the face? The females may not have that, any of that at all. But that yellow throat, the throat could be uh, not just yellow. It may even be a kind of a peach color, uh, apricot color. Um, just, But this one is a confusing one. They tend to be low in shrubs. They also tend to be, again, near wetland areas. And uh, greenish or uh, kind of a greenish gray back. If you can see the males with their little uh, bandit mask, that's cool. Uh, but if you get a little bird in the, in the wetland area peering out at you and you see a yellow throat, more than likely it's going to be a common yellow throat. So fun little birds. So you can see quite a variability in, in fall. Uh, as, as to what these birds look like. Again, males, some of these males don't change very much. Females can be a little more difficult. It's the young of the year that sometimes really trip people up. And uh, that's where that confusing fall warbler moniker comes in. Um, you just have to work at it a little harder. That's why I like that challenge. All right, let's take a look at the next slide, please. Oh, yeah, a couple slides ago we saw a bird called a Nashville warbler, and now, look at this, a Tennessee. How about that? Uh, Tennessee warblers uh, in the fall are this lovely, uh, kind of an olive, uh, green olive green on the top, and you can see there's a couple of poses there, uh, light underneath, a little bit of white like on the belly, and then uh, a line through the eye, not a deep, deep line, like a, a real high marked line, but there's a, a line through the eye, kind of a dark line through the eye. Can everybody see that? Okay. Yeah, so that, that green olive green back. In the spring, they'll have a uh, that greeny back, but they'll also have um, a, a uh, gray cap. Oh, the plant on the left is Taxus, yep. And the one on the right, the plant on the right is Alder. And the fuzzy stuff on there is uh, some type of insect. I don't know if it's a, an aphid, a fuzzy aphid, but my alders have that fuzzy aphid stuff on it, too. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Gloria. You like your like your plants. That's good. All right, let's check out the next slide. And some more Tennessees. It looks like the same uh, plant where Tom had taken that uh, that photograph. You can see where the the alders have that fuzz on them. Um, again, some really nice shots of the Tennessee with that olivey green back, that line through the eye, uh, light underbelly. Just really, again, really a pretty bird. Now, of course, when you're out birding and if you have light shining through leaves, it can turn a lot of things into kind of that, that light green or an olivey green color or light reflecting from green leaves onto a belly. So, uh, yeah, things can be a little challenging. All right, let's take that look at the next slide. 
Ah, Shalom. I like this one. Uh, this little bird has his yarmulke on, so you know, we say Shalom when you see the uh, Wilson's Warbler. Um, two well-marked birds, uh, the males uh, tend to be a little brighter, have a little darker cap. Probably the one on the left looks like a male. Uh, the one on the right, mm, female, young male possibly, uh, but again, very small pretty much all yellow bird, even underneath. So again, you've got your binoculars, you're looking up, oh, it's all yellow underneath, and it's really, really small. And then, yep, more than likely you have your, your Wilson's Warbler with this little, this little black cap on. That timer. All right, next slide, please. And uh, one that's going to be coming through and it has ha actually has started coming through um, about a mm, week ago, 10 days ago, the bird on the left called the yellow rumped warbler. Uh, also called the myrtle warbler, um, but yellow rumped warbler is, uh, is the common name. And yes, they do have a yellow rump. Uh, but you notice there's a little spot of yellowish on the side where the uh, wing, a bend of the wing is. They also will have a, often have a little yellow on their crown too. So, but nice, uh, clear throat, some streaking on the breast. Um, these birds are actually pretty good size. I mean, they're they're not giant birds. None of these birds are giant, but they but they're uh, um, some of the larger of the, the warblers. And uh, they they make a lot of noise, not singing, but they do have calls. And you, uh, I often hear the call first, which then alerts me to the bird that's going to be around. These birds are coming in hot and heavy uh, in the next uh, couple weeks. And uh, this is another bird that can be seen uh, or that we've gotten on our Christmas bird counts in the wintertime. Um, you know what, what one of their favorite foods is? Poison ivy berries. Yeah, isn't that great? Uh, so they eat the berries, whoop, out comes the seed, and you're like, where did this poison ivy come from in my, in my backyard? Well, blame the birds. Poison ivy will really tie a lot of birds over in the winter time. So uh, in the winter, if you do see a, some clusters of poison ivy berries, um, you know, watch for things that are eating them. Uh, woodpeckers will eat them, and uh, I've even seen um, a pileated woodpecker dangling on a vine of poison ivy, feeding on the fruits. Now, pileated woodpeckers are a good-sized woodpecker, right? These birdies are little, so so poison ivy is is good and keeps them going. So not all these warblers are insect eaters. Yes, insects are their main food source, but in the fall with the fruits on, on trees and shrubs and vines, they will feed on fruits as well too. And we have just threw that last Cape May warbler in there to, to fill up the slide. <laughs> How about that? So I think with that, I think we've hit all of our slides. And uh, yeah. So I don't know if anybody has any questions. But thanks, Nancy, so much. Um, you know, I think I've seen a couple of these little guys in my dogwood. After I saw them, I wouldn't be surprised. I, you know, there was a kind of a greenish yellow bird the other day, and it, I thought, is that a goldfinch? I don't know. It doesn't didn't really look like one, you know, and. I thought, I wonder what that is. And then when you're showing them, I thought there were just two. It may have been, I think. But now I can kind of watch a little bit better <laughs> on my okay. dog wood. Yeah, you just never know what's going to be coming through an area, no matter how urban or suburban. You know, right. I, uh, one of the areas and the hot spots that was covered by some of the, the guys earlier. Uh, or in the video, they talk about downtown Cleveland. They talk about public square. 
you know, there are birds that, that are that are coming through and land in public square in some of the little pocket parks. So yeah, these birds will come through and find a place where they can uh, roost and feed and that type of thing. Um, you brought you brought up a good point about um, goldfinch. Uh, goldfinch, of course, are changing from their nice bright yellow plumage to their duller greener plumage, more female-like. And that that's a bird that can be confused with a with a warbler. Uh, vireos can, uh, vireos can, can also be confused with with warblers. Vireos tend to have a heavier beak with a little hook at the end and are not generally not quite as, as jumpy, uh, jump around the, the vegetation as much as warblers. Go ahead. That's what I thought. This was kind of a little hopping bird. Mm -hmm. it, it's not more than a goldfinch. I don't I don't see a goldfinch as being something that hops too much. It kind of yeah. and eats wherever it's at. Good, um, good, yeah. Yeah. Good observation, you know, they're right. They do move around a lot. Chuck, uh, Slusarchik. Slusarchik. Now you have to spell it. I know. He, <laughs> um, he does a lot of his birding in Erie Street Cemetery. And he's down there a lot. So I watch his, you know, when he's doing, you know, when he's doing things and stuff. And he's, Tom and he are both such they're different photographers on how they do the lighting and the and what what not, but they are both so talented, I think, for being bird photographers. We have a lot in our area who are, so it was good to see those slides from them. But this was I think it was really very helpful, Nancy, and I want to see I wanna get out there and try this. You know, I wanna see what I can do, so, <laughs> and like I said, if I get five species, I think I'm up and running. <laughs> yeah, so, so those folks who turn in their checklists, again, stick around in your county. Um, if people turn in a checklist, and I know they live in Kyle County, and yet they've put some birds in from Lorraine County, I'll, I'll cut those out. I mean, I, I will be, I will be ruthless. <laughs> are you uh, going to do this in the spring again? Do you think? Or are you going to that do would it? be that would be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. But again, we'd have to. This challenge would have to be again. Stick around your your either your neighborhood or your county, that kind of thing, because everybody will want to want want to go maybe to Western Ohio, to to uh, McGee Marsh and Ottawa and places like that, if they're open. Again, we just don't know what's going to happen with COVID. So um, we hope that uh, yeah people will, will do their local patch, their local areas, kind mm -hmm. of stick with, stick around and, and just see what's around. That's why I have found Lake Isaac so interesting because I had never really birded it that much, never had the time. Now I do have the time. And so I'm, uh, I'm having a, a good time just seeing that diversity uh, or, and how things are changing. Uh, through the fall. Well, well, thanks, Nancy. I really appreciate you doing that. You've really put a lot of effort in this challenge, and it it shows. It's really great. You and Betsy both. So, so. Yeah, I want to thank Betsy for getting the slides put together, finding these wonderful slides. Uh, Betsy was saying that you know we have good, great photographers, but. Fall warblers don't seem to be their forte. Yeah, uh, everybody wants to do the spring warblers, but but I think the the fall warblers are just as as beautiful. And uh, again, for identification purposes, for for this type of thing, um, you know, you need a, a nice variety of, of of photos. Yeah, in a different way, they're very beautiful. Thanks again. Mm -hmm. You're welcome, Nancy. Yeah. Can I send you some more of some other fall warblers that you didn't even include? So, you know, like Orange Crown and um, a couple other pictures I think might, might help for and, and some other presentations. Oh, uh, that would be lovely. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yes, I wish I did have an Orange Crown photo. Um, though those are the ones, again, that really stumped me a lot. So, I, I, I need that. Okay. 
Still do. Yeah. I really, I really uh, am in awe of people who are out birding and take wonderful photographs at the same oh. time. You know, they've got a camera with a lens this big. They're birding, or they got their camera, boom, and they and they're t you know just rattling off the shots, and they get some fabulous shots. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. I, I you know, I can barely walk and chew gum at the same time. <laughs> But yeah, I'll send you some. They're not my but pictures. They're, they're pictures from those people who are walking around with the big cameras. Okay. <laughs> well, you take some fantastic photos too, Marianne. Well, yeah, but they're not warbler pictures, and I'm never going to do warblers. <laughs> <laughs> never say never. <laughs> it's a nice blurry one of a chestnut sided today. <laughs> I'm sorry, what's that? A nice, nice blurry one of a chestnut sided today. Oh, did you? Yeah. Where were you today? I was down at the, the Wendy Park at the, the Rock Mound close to the river. And okay. Uh, it kind of reminds that little round, that little mound there kind of reminds me of the old Donald Gray Gardens where the where the garden was overgrown over the rocks and stuff. Yeah. Like that. And um, it it just reminds me of that a lot because they were tucking in and out and it was just one little place you could just stand there and they would. I had eleven kinds of warblers just coming in in about thirty minutes. Wow. Yeah. All right. Including nice. Brown and a Connecticut. <gasps> and Connecticut, fantastic. Wow. All righty. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. We'll see you later. Don't forget all right. Ha happy fall birding. Happy birding all the all the year round. And Thank you so much. Everybody, have a good evening. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.